So in this next section, I just want to cover gambling disorder diagnostic features, which are also covered and mentioned in the this chapter in the DSM-5. Okay, here we go. The essential feature of gambling disorder is a persistent and recurrent maladaptive gambling behavior that disrupts personal, family, and or vocational pursuits. A pattern of, quote, chastens one's losses may develop with an urgent need to keep gambling to undo the losses or from a series of losses. So they call this chastens, chasing the losses. So a gambler will um, be under a lot of stress and pressure just to, to make one more bet, make this big bet. If I win this one, if I get this one, I'll win all my losses back and then everything will be okay. So, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll double down, uh, bet a little bit more on a long shot because if it comes in, everything will be good and I'll be, you know, I'll be back on my feet. And of course, that doesn't happen and they get deeper and deeper into debt. Individuals lie to everyone to conceal gambling illegal behavior like the forgery and fraud, theft and embezzlement to obtain money to gamble. And then and they lie about that. And who do they lie to? They lie to the people who love them the most. And everybody, and work, and jobs, and friends. And then gambling can increase during periods of stress and depression, and during periods of substance use and abstinence. So when a gambler with a gambling disorder is struggling with some issues that are stressful and maybe get depressed or mood swings, they use gambling as a mood stabilizer to, to bring themselves up from depression or to deal with stress. They gamble. Some individuals with gambling disorder are impulsive, competitive, energetic, restless, and easily bored. They may be concerned with approval of others and may be generous to the point of extravagance when winning. And this is what gamblers do. If they win, if they, they, they get a hit, if they win something, whether it's a track or in a game, they're very excited about that. They're extravagant about that. You know, they, they get their friends together and let's have a party. Come on, give me everybody's bill. Everybody have a drink. It's on me. I'm, you know, and we'll pay for everything that, that, that is, you know, outside of their normal range of behavior. Why? Because it's all about winning. It's all fun and games. Isn't winning fun? Look at these people having a great time winning. Woohoo! It's all fun and games. Of course, that last slide is it's not true. Because other individuals with gambling disorder are depressed and lonely and may gamble when feeling helpless, guilty, and depressed. It's not all fun and games. Here we see alcohol, drinking, smoking, and they do it alone. They're alone, isolated by themselves. No one's watching their alcohol drinking. They can drink as much as they want. And it's very, very, very depressing. How do we know that? Up to 50% of individuals in treatment for gambling disorder have suicidal ideations, and about 17% have attempted suicide. 